Hello everyone! Welcome to Teltonica Telematics and 3D Tracking webinar iSensors on 3D Tracking Platform. We are really excited to have you here with us today, willing to learn more about the topic. My name is Lukas Barasnaiuchis and I am a Project Development Coordinator here at Teltonica Telematics, world-leading vehicle tracking hardware manufacturer for aftermarket and OEM applications. Together with me is Vitanis Kibildis, Project Coordinator also here at Teltonica Telematics. Hi Vitanis. Hello everyone, nice to see you here. Thanks Vitanis. And also we have Roydon Michael, Chief Executive Officer at 3D Tracking. Hello Roydon. Hi Lucas and hi everyone, thanks for attending. For those who don't know, 3D Tracking is a global telematic software provider with more than 17 years experience. Our software platform supports partners and end clients across more than 100 countries worldwide, tracking more than half a million vehicles each day. At 3D Tracking, we focus on cutting edge functionality and the highest levels of support in order to provide our partners with a class leading telematics platform. Thanks, Lucas. Thank you, Roydon. So today, we will start by overviewing iBeacon and iSensor main features, the similarities and differences between them. Then, we will discuss prominent use cases, wireless driver identification, non-powered equipment tracking, temperature monitoring, and assets identification. After each use case, Roydon from 3D Tracking will demonstrate how their platform enriches this functionality. Let's start with iAccessories Overview. These are our two Bluetooth low energy connectivity based devices that are integrated in 3D tracking platform, iBeacon and iSensor. As you may notice, they both have a sophisticated casing design with two mounting points for flexible and quick installation. No additional accessories needed. The appealing similarities that the devices have are the robust IP67 certified casing, which means that both accessories are waterproof and dust resistant. Furthermore, they ensure up to 80 meters signal range in an open field, which is in line with our main competitors based on actual measurements. And both eye accessories can be ordered with special customization options like the branding, custom logo, custom design engraving, and of course, custom settings configuration. So what are the main differences between these devices? Well, iBeacon is a great choice for simple identification or asset location purposes, with battery up to 10 years depending on configuration and Edistone and iBeacon protocol support. On the other hand, if your usage scenario requires sensor data, such as temperature, approximate humidity, accelerometer, or magnet, iSensor is the right choice with battery lifetime of up to five years and the Edistone, iBeacon, and iSensor protocols. A great choice for call chain, delivery, agricultural, construction, and many other businesses. So, without any further delay, Let's continue with prominent scenarios where eye accessories prove to be useful. And let's start with fully automated wireless driver identification and working time tracking. As you can see in the scheme, the solution works this way. An FM device is mounted in a vehicle and each driver has his own eye beacon iBeacon advertises its data, or in this case, a signed driver, and the FEM device scans for this data and sends it to the platform. It enables a fully automatic solution. The driver may have the beacon attached to his keychain, phone, have in the pocket, etc. With iBeacons, they don't have to do anything to authenticate, just get directly to work. It's that simple. Do you see in the scheme that a reader is missing? Well, iBeacons, contrary to one-wire solutions, don't need any mechanical readers, so the installation is low-cost. And since there is no reader, 
there are no reader maintenance costs as well. And because the solution is wireless and fully automated, there is no space for errors and dishonest. No risk that the driver may forget to scan his RFID card. Finally, this usage scenario could optionally be used with Immobilizer as well. It's important to mention though that this solution is not designed to work when there are multiple drivers in the same cabin because the FM device would read multiple iBeacons for driver identification. The solution works perfectly for businesses where there is one driver in the cabin. And now I will ask our partner from 3D Tracking to show us how the solution actually looks like in 3D Tracking platform. Roydon, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you, Lucas. So let me start by saying that the 3D Tracking platform is integrated with the eye beacon and the eye sensor, regardless of whether those sensors are set up using the Eddystone or eye beacon data format. Now with driver ID, Let's start by having a look at the driver setup within the platform. In the driver management section, users can add and manage the drivers within their organization. Basic details such as driver name, contact number, and email can be captured, as well as any additional data related to the driver, such as their hiring date, license number, etc. This data is fully customizable meaning the user can add any data fields that they choose. With regards to automated identification, drivers are assigned a driver tag. This tag matches the code that is programmed into the eye device. So when the in-vehicle device picks up that code from the eye sensor or eye beacon, the platform will automatically assign the driver. Here we can see a driver assigned to the vehicle and the platform even allows us to send an SMS to the driver. Now let's have a look at a vehicle that swaps drivers throughout the day. Here you can see the various trips and as you can see the driver is changing depending on who is carrying the eye beacon in the vehicle. In addition you can even see the driver scoring for each driver. Now once the driver is assigned all activity that takes place in the vehicle will be allocated to that driver. This means that the report can be generated not only based on a particular vehicle, but also based on a particular driver. Here we can see the driver names, and when we run the report, here we can see the driver names associated with each trip in this trip summary report. Now let's have a look at a KPI report for the same drivers. This highlights all the statistics that a fleet manager needs to get a high level understanding of the amount of time each driver is active for the report period, and also the key events that happen during that time. Finally, let's have a look at how the driver ID functionality can be used in behavior monitoring. Here's an example of behavior scoring which rates each driver's performance. Here you can see the report for the same two drivers. Due to the number of rapid turns identified by the FMC device, the driver JS has a score of 65%. Driver PJ, who has fewer events, has a better score and is scored at 91%. Thanks, Lucas. Back to you. Thank you, Ryder. Next non-powered equipment tracking. This is where iBeacon is placed on an equipment or mobile device and the owner is interested in its movement. So for example, trailers tracking. As it is shown in the scheme, an iBeacon is effortlessly attached in the front of a trailer and the trailer location details are gathered when a FEM device wirelessly reads the beacon. It provides trailer's location and trip details anytime, anywhere to the platform. It is possible to learn trailer's use time and productivity as we will see in 3D tracking demo. As I mentioned, eye accessories can be easily installed on the trailer even by a manager or a driver. There's no need for a qualified mechanics. 
us with wired solutions. Also, iBeacons have customizable settings, advertising period, identification by naming to understand which trailer it is, signal level, if not wanted, that it would be seen by FM devices that are far and similar. Finally, the solution is wireless and affordable. There is no need to install wires in the trailer or change them if they break. Even if the worst happens, the iBeacons are very easy to change as well. Another great opportunity to use iBeacons lay in agriculture for smart farming and outstanding efficiency. It is achieved by adding iBeacons on various farming machinery, such as ploughs, seeders, cultivators, etc. Then the FM device of powered vehicle, such as tractor, reads the beacon and sends its data to the platform. That way, the solution allows to learn real use time of farming aggregates, easily locate assets and their movement. And it can be combined with wireless driver ID as well. Once again, iBeacons are easy to install and configure, saving your precious time. And as we all know, time is money. All the collected data helps to have comprehensive view of what is happening in the fields and make efficient data-driven operational decisions. This is so important based on gathered usage data, decisions are made, such as whether it's profitable to keep working in a particular field, a real game changer for agriculture. And now, Mr. Michael, I would love to give the stage for you for the demo of non-powered equipment tracking. Thank you, Lucas. Let me share my screen again so everyone can have a look. Now, as Lucas said, not all assets have a power source such as a battery, or they might not be suitable to be installed with a large self-powered tracking device. Even though these assets are valuable, or they perform regular movement that makes asset owners interested in the tracking data, these assets are not able to support existing devices. By using the eye sensor or eye beacon on these assets, this data is combined with the tracking data of the connected vehicle, allowing these assets to build up a detailed tracking history for use in the 3D tracking platform. Let's have a look at an example of how two of these assets, each with an eye device, are able to generate their own independent tracking data. Here you can see the latest tracking data being displayed from the last time each of the relevant eye devices reported via the regular tracking unit. In addition, the full history of trips for these devices is also available. Here we can see the trips for each of these assets. The full range of reports and alerts throughout the system are available on these, such as trip reports, geofence alerts, etc., meaning that non-powered assets are now able to harness the full value of a fleet management platform, even though the assets themselves are not installed with the GPS tracker. Here you can see an example of a trip summary report. The regular vehicle is showing all of the trips and the individual assets are only showing those trips where they were actually connected to a vehicle. Some examples of markets that would utilize this type of solution are trailer tracking, where trailers are often left unconnected for periods of time, as well as container tracking and also agriculture. In short, any valuable or mobile asset that requires detailed tracking and analysis can utilize the eye device in association with a regular tracker to provide detailed mobile asset monitoring. Thanks, Lucas. Back to you. Thank you. It was really interesting. And the next use case, temperature monitoring. To measure the temperature, ice sensors need to be used. They can be placed wherever you need them. For instance, as it is shown in the scheme, in a commercial cold chain vehicle. The FM tracker reads the eye sensor and collects the data 
which is then transferred to the server. The sensors help to effortlessly and precisely monitor the temperature and additional parameters that may be needed in your project. Various conditions may be experienced in the cold chain logistics, but eye sensors are ready to meet them. It's robust and IP67 certified waterproof casing ensures reliability even in harsh conditions. They are easy to mount wherever needed, no wires involved, no need for qualified mechanics. For the most reliable connection, it is recommended to mount as close as possible to the tracker, for example, close to the roof of the trailer. And of course, iBeacons have customizable settings for your project needs, such as advertising period and identification by naming. Now, Roydon, I know you've just been talking, but please show us some temperature tracking. Thank you, Lucas. Because the eye devices are wireless, they can connect data from difficult to reach places in a vehicle or in places where it's not possible to connect via a physical cable. Multiple sensors can also be associated with a single tracking device, allowing the monitoring of various locations at the same time, all as an extension of the one vehicle tracker. Here we can see an example where various storage zones within a large truck are being monitored at the same time. A sensor is placed in each compartment and then the name associated with each sensor tells us where the relevant data is coming from. Clicking on a sensor allows the user to see the value throughout the day. Now if an eye sensor is used, we can also monitor estimated humidity as well. Here we can see a graph showing the two temperatures for each of the zones at the same time so we can do a comparison. Once the temperature data is being received by the platform, the full range of reporting and alert functionality can be applied. For example, we can run a detailed report of each temperature value received for each of the temperature zones. If we look at the alerts, we can set up a basic alert against each temperature zone. We can set a range, and this alert will tell the user each time the temperature goes outside of the range, in this case, below 10 degrees or above 25 degrees. Now, when the temperature data is used in conjunction with other information, the value is even more powerful, so complex scenarios can be created. For example, a common scenario with cold train chucks is that the temperature of the refrigerated zone must not be outside a certain range when the truck is outside of the cold storage facility and the door should also not be open as well. Here we can see that an alert is set up against the zone one temperature. We can also see that it's monitoring whether it's inside the refrigerated storage zone or not now that is a point of interest created on the platform. And also, we're using the inputs on the FMC device to monitor whether the rear door is open. If the temperature moves out of the range and the door is open and the device is outside of the point of interest, when all of these are true at the same time, the system will fire an alert. The temperature data is commonly used in cold chain logistics. But the iDevice functionality can be applied to any temperature sensitive environment, such as transportation of medical goods, fuel, or food. Thanks, Lucas. Back to you. Thank you for this example. The next use case is assets identification. To understand which asset is where, its movement history, and similar details. This can be used for goods tracking by placing eye beacon or eye sensor on the goods and then the FM device of the vehicle reads the eye accessory when it is in range and sends this data to the platform. For example, the eye beacon can be placed in the parcel to track its journey and movement, where and when it was loaded and unloaded. On top of that, 
it allows to track asset status and understand is the asset is present in the vehicle or not. And actually, it can be achieved with any kind of assets, boxes, baby car seats, bags, and similar. In addition, sensors can be used to monitor temperature conditions during the transportation if the asset is temperature sensitive. The solution is of course customizable for project needs, so I encourage you to test it even if the projects are a little bit different. And eye accessories are wireless and affordable, so easy to mount in different places, change if needed, and exploit its benefits. Another industry where assets identification is useful, waste management. But the same principle can be applied to various mobile objects management, such as, such as mobile toilets or other types of containers, etc. In this case, the eye accessories are mounted on these mobile objects or, as it is in the scheme, waste containers. When the service vehicle visits them, in this case, waste transport, its FM device reads the eye device that is mounted on the container and sends this data to the platform. So it allows to reliably track container location, understand if the transport stopped near the container and for how long to make certain that it was emptied. What helps to prevent these angry calls from the end customers for non-emptied containers, improve company's efficiency and reputation. The functionality also assists in ensuring timely service and plan effective route by seeing containers list and their real location. The eye accessories are easy to config configure via user-friendly eye app, which can be also used to view eye devices in range. All this data leads to data-driven business decisions and efficient operations. So, I've been talking for so long. Roydon, would you mind covering for me for the platform part? Thanks, Lucas. I'll be happy to do that. Earlier, we looked at non-powered assets where the user requires detailed fleet management tracking, but the asset is not able to support a regular or battery-powered GPS device. Another type of user case is assets that do not require detailed tracking but rather need analysis around when and where the assets are loaded or unloaded from their vehicles. Each of these assets has an eye device attached and the tracking device in the vehicle can report when the asset is loaded or unloaded. So let's start by having a look at the asset setup within the platform. A user can create various asset types and within each type the user can create the individual assets. The name of the asset is entered as well as any custom fields that are required similar to the drivers. In addition the unique ID of the eye device is associated with the asset. When the vehicle reports that asset is in range the system attaches the asset to the vehicle and when the asset is no longer in range or the Bluetooth disconnects, the system automatically removes it from the vehicle. In this scenario, we have two trailers that are routinely connected and disconnected from the vehicle. Here we can see the status of each asset, whether or not it is currently connected to a vehicle or not. We can also see the last known location, the last time that it reported, and we can even see the last known location on a map. Now currently, one of the trailers is connected to the vehicle. Here, if we hover over that trailer, we can see the trailer name, as well as the last time that it reported. If we look on the reporting side, we can see the asset assignment report provides details of when each asset was assigned and unassigned from the vehicle, as well as a summary of what happened during that period, such as the amount of time that the asset was allocated, the distance covered in that period, the location at the end of that asset allocation, and we can also have a look and see the tracking that happened during that period. 
This functionality is most commonly used for assets where the travel details are not of primary importance to the user. So the majority of fleet focused reports and alerts do not need to apply. Rather, the user is interested in knowing when and where each asset was connected and disconnected. Example market segments within our existing client base that utilize this information are equipment rentals. So for example, a car rental company that also rents car seats, which are rented based on the amount of time that the car seat is within the vehicle. Another example is building waste management. In this scenario, the client is interested in the amount of time that a building skip is located at a customer site. In other words, the time when it is not connected to the vehicle. Lucas, back to you. Thank you, Raidan. So, today we covered four prominent use cases of how our eye accessories can help your businesses boost efficiency, open up new possibilities, and thrive. Fully automated wireless driver ID, non powered equipment tracking, convenient and wireless temperature monitoring, and various asset identification. And it doesn't stop here. There are even more opportunities with eye devices. Some of them are listed in the presented eye webpage, teltonica-gps.com slash eye. Even if it is not listed there, please contact us and we will do our best to satisfy your business need with eye accessories. If you have any more questions or would like to start working with us, here are our contact details for your attention. Drop a quick email or call us at your convenience, whether the way suits you the best. If you are a business partner or client already, please contact your account manager for more information. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our session. I hope you enjoyed it, found this webinar relevant and helpful for your business. On behalf of the Teltonica Telematics and 3D Tracking teams, thank you very much for joining us today and I say goodbye for now. Bye!